Welcome to Learn This Game, where you can learn about board games and how they are played. In this presentation, we'll be looking at Tarawa, 1943. In this video, there'll be a general description and overview of the game. We'll inventory the components, and we'll go through gameplay, including setup, sample turns, and victory conditions. There'll be helpful links in the description, as well as a timestamp index. If you want to go straight to the setup and gameplay, you can go to the timestamp index now. And if you find this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. You can also leave a comment to share your experience or let us know what game you'd like to see reviewed. Your participation really does help the channel continue to grow and provide more content. Terrawa 1943 was first published by Worthington Games in 2021 and designed by Grant and Mike Wiley. In this solitary historical war game, you lead the U.S. 2nd Marine Division in the invasion of Tarawa, which was defended by the Japanese in World War II. This game is recommended for ages 14 and older. The difficulty level is low, and each game takes up to 60 minutes to play. The game is intended for solo play only. There are no multiplayer variants. An app is not required, and there are no apps available for this game. Now that you've seen a brief introduction to the game, let's get into the game itself. This is a solitaire historical war game that uses a mounted board, cards, dice, and wooden tokens. Thematically, the game is based on the historical military invasion of Tarawa by the United States Marine Corps during World War II. Now let's see how the game is won. The game is played on a board showing the different island positions that can be occupied by military units. The island positions are shown in yellow, and each position contains up to three Japanese or U.S. markers. There are a total of nine island positions and several water positions separated into two waves. Victory points are totaled at the end of the game to determine the victor and level of victory. Both sides have different ways of earning victory points during the game. The U.S. gains two victory points per U.S. controlled island position at the end of the game, and one victory point per Japanese card remaining if the U.S. gains control of all island positions before the Japanese deck is exhausted. The Japanese gain two victory points per U.S. marker eliminated, one victory point per U.S. battalion exhausted, and three victory points for each Japanese-controlled island position at the end of the game. The Japanese win if they tie or exceed the U.S. victory points. The U.S. wins if they score more victory points than the Japanese. Depending on how many victory points you win by, you will gain a marginal, moderate, or smashing U.S. victory. Now let's look at the components. Terra 1943 includes a full-color 12-page rulebook, a 24-page full-color battle manual that includes card examples and historical notes, one pad of worksheets to calculate victory points, one mounted board depicting Batillo Island and surrounding waters, one sheet of U.S. Marine Corps and Japanese military stickers. The U.S. Marine stickers are placed on the green wooden rectangular markers, one sticker per marker. The Japanese stickers are placed on the yellow wooden rectangular markers. There are also spare standard labels, in addition to bonus alternate labels that can be used instead of the standard labels. There are brown cubes used to represent bunkers. There are Japanese golden marker cubes to show infiltrated positions, and red cubes used to track U.S. unit cohesion and to show which battalions have failed an exhaustion check. There are 30 U.S. Marine Tactics cards that give various bonuses to the U.S. during gameplay. There are 30 Japanese Artificial Intelligence Activation cards that tell you which Japanese units to activate and how to use the card. And finally, there are 7 green, 6-sided dice. Now let's set up the game for the sample playthrough. First, unfold and place the game board in the play area. Next, we'll place the Japanese markers. After you've applied the Japanese stickers to the yellow rectangular markers, place three markers in each numbered island position. All of the Japanese stickers are identical, so you can place them in any position. Next, we'll place the U.S. Marine Corps units. The U.S. Marine Corps stickers are placed on the green rectangular markers. Unlike the Japanese units, the U.S. units are labeled by battalion and regiment. There are three U.S. Marine regiments. These are the 2nd, 6th, and 8th regiments. The first number indicates the battalion of the regiment. There are three markers per battalion and they are placed together on the board. The second number shows the regiment, so the examples indicated are the three markers for the first battalion of the 2nd USMC regiment. 
We will be placing our units along the Red Beach locations, which were the historical landing sites of the battle. According to the optional rules, you may also choose to place your units on the other side of the island to target a Black Beach landing. First, we'll place the three markers of the 3rd Battalion, 2nd Regiment in the Wave 1 water position next to Red Beach 1. Next, we'll place the 2nd Battalion, 2nd Regiment markers next to Red Beach 2. Then we'll place the 2nd of the 8th next to Red Beach 3. Next, we'll place the Wave 2 markers as instructed by the rulebook. The remaining two battalions are kept off board as reserves until we bring them onto a wave position later in the game. At the top right of the board, each U.S. battalion shows a battalion cohesion track. We place a red cube in each number 12 space of each cohesion track. We then place three gold cubes in the three Japanese infiltration squares at the top left of the board. We place the brown bunker cubes and remaining golden and red cubes to the side for later use during gameplay. We also place the seven green dice nearby. Next, we shuffle the Japanese AI deck and draw 24 cards to place face down in the Japanese draw deck space. We place the remaining six cards face down in the discard pile. The discarded cards will not be used in this game. We then shuffle the US Marine deck and place 24 cards face down in the US draw pile and place the remaining cards face down in the discard pile. These discarded cards will also not be used in the game. We draw the top three cards of the U.S. Tactics deck and place them face up in the play area to create our starting hand. If one of the cards is the Bad Intelligence card, we discard it but do not get to draw a replacement. We only discard this card if drawn during game setup. We are now ready to start the game. Now let's see how the game is played. The game is played in a series of rounds. Each round consists of one turn for the U.S. player followed by a turn by the Japanese AI. Before the first round of the game, the special landing phase is conducted. This phase only occurs once during the game before the regular rounds begin. In this phase, the Japanese make an initial fire attack roll of four dice against each of the US occupied wave one positions that are adjacent to an occupied Japanese position. In this historical scenario, this would include positions Red Beach 1, 2, and 3. No cards are played during this phase, and any die roll of one is considered to have no effect. The Japanese fire attack and bonsai attack tables are located on the left side of the board. You can also find the attack tables on the back page of the rulebook. There are nine island positions. Each one is labeled with a red priority number and a name. The cards in the game will sometimes refer to lower and higher priority positions. Lower numbers have higher priorities, so number 1 would be the highest and 9 would be the lowest priority. Also note that adjacent positions are indicated by double arrow lines. Now we'll conduct the first Japanese fire attack in the special landing phase at Red Beach 1 against the 3rd Battalion of the 2nd Regiment. According to the Japanese fire attack table, we normally roll 3 dice, but in this unique phase we must roll 4 dice. We roll a 1, 6, 2, and 2. The one result has no effect. The six results in the removal of one U.S. marker. However, the two result allows us to cancel any six rolled. The second two result has no effect. So ultimately, no damage is done to this battalion during the landing phase. Next, the Japanese will conduct a fire attack from Red Beach 2. Again, we roll four dice for the Japanese attack. The two sixes remove two markers from the battalion. The four reduces the unit cohesion by one. However, the two result allows us to cancel one of the six results, so we only need to remove one marker. So we remove one marker from the battalion, and then move the red cube on the second of the second cohesion track down one space to 11. Next, the Japanese will fire attack the second of the eighth and roll another four dice. We now lose two markers and one cohesion point. We remove the two markers, and then move the cube on the unit's cohesion track, reducing it by one. We are now ready to start regular rounds of play. Each round consists of a U.S. turn followed by a Japanese turn. To start the U.S. turn, we will drop to two cards to fill out our maximum hand of three cards. Since we already have three cards, we will not draw this turn. Next, unless indicated otherwise on one of the tactics cards, we may take one action. Place a new wave, regroup, rotate battalions, move, or attack. When deciding which action to take, we can review our cards. Each card has four sections plus a number on the bottom right of the card for inventory purposes. There's a title, 
instructions on how to use the card, historical flavor text, and an indication when the card can be played, either during the Japanese or U.S. turn. We may, but are not required to, play one card during the U.S. turn and one card during the Japanese turn as long as the card is played per the instructions. This particular card is number 8 in the deck. Once all of the U.S. cards have been drawn, we do not get to reshuffle the discards and refresh our deck. Once the deck is exhausted, we can continue to play but will not receive any additional cards. We will use our one action to attack the Red Beach 1 position. We will also use our air support card to add one die to our attack action. We will refer to the USMC attack chart on the board, or we can refer to the back page of the rulebook. When choosing an attack action, we must reduce the cohesion of the attacking unit by one on the cohesion track. We then roll five dice plus one more die because of the air support card. The two sixes remove one Japanese marker. The four is immediately removed and may not be re-rolled. The single two has no effect. The double ones cause the removal of one marker from our attacking battalion. We now have the option of spending another cohesion point to re-roll any of our dice except for the four results. So we reduce one cohesion point from the battalion's cohesion track to the 10 space so we can re-roll. We will re-roll the three dice showing 1, 1, and 2. We re-roll a 2, 1, and 5. Since none of these have any effect to single numbers, we decide to end the turn and remove one Japanese marker due to the double sixes. By re-rolling, we spent one cohesion point, but prevented the loss of one of our markers. We then check for exhaustion. The cohesion tracks measure the battalion's morale, fatigue, and combat effectiveness. An exhaustion check must be conducted when a non-exhausted battalion performing an action has its cohesion at five or less on its cohesion track, and has completed an action, or when an exhausted battalion regroups. Any Japanese attack causing a cohesion reduction against a U.S. battalion at five or less also causes an immediate exhaustion check. At this time, we do not need to make an exhaustion check because our attacking battalion does not have its exhaustion level at five or less. But if we did need to make an exhaustion check, we would roll one die. If the result was equal to or less than the current cohesion number, the battalion would not be exhausted. However, if the die result is higher than the cohesion number, the battalion is exhausted and a red exhaustion cube is placed on the battalion. An exhausted battalion may only rotate positions as the result of a different battalion's actions. The final step in our turn allows us to discard one of our tactics cards if no cards were played this turn. Since we did play the air support card, we cannot discard one of our remaining cards at this time. The Japanese then get to take their turn. The Japanese side is driven by the Japanese AI cards. We draw the top card from the Japanese AI deck and place it face up on the discard pile. We then follow the instructions on the card. We drew the prepared defenses card, which tells us to complete two actions for the Japanese. The first action we must take is to add a bunker to the highest priority Japanese occupy position that does not already have a bunker. We place a brown cube representing a bunker on the Red Beach 1 position, since this position has a priority number of 1, and this is the highest priority number occupied by the Japanese. No more than one bunker may be in a position. Any occupied island position that must lose a marker due to defending a position may use the bunker as its first loss instead of a marker. The second Japanese action allows them to conduct one fire attack against an adjacent enemy from the lowest priority position of the Japanese. The three Japanese positions that are adjacent to U.S. battalions are positions 1, 2, and 3. Since 3 is the lowest priority number of the positions, the Japanese will conduct a fire attack from Red Beach 3. We roll three dice and consult the Japanese fire attack chart. This results in 6, 1, and 4. Since the 6 result was not canceled by a 2 result, we must remove the last remaining marker from the wave position and remove the corresponding cube on the cohesion track. The final step in the Japanese turn is to check for exhaustion for any U.S. battalion that reduced below 6 cohesion. Since there are none this turn, play proceeds to a new U.S. turn. During a Japanese turn, if you draw the Shibazaki Killed card or the Communication Destroyed card, you place a red cube on the corresponding space at the top left of the game board. Each card effect reduces future bonsai attacks by one die, and the effects are cumulative, so having both cubes in place will reduce future bonsai attacks by two dice. Play continues until one of two conditions is reached. First, 
The game ends immediately if the U.S. controls all nine island positions at the end of a U.S. turn. Or, the game ends once the last Japanese card is played. However, the U.S. player still gets to take one more turn after the last card is played. This concludes the sample play for Terrawa 1943. Before we proceed to the victory and loss conditions, we'll briefly review the different actions that the player can take during the U.S. turn. First, we'll revisit the attack action. We've already demonstrated how attacks are conducted using the dice and attack charts. The battalion that just attacked a Japanese position and eliminated the last Japanese marker may move its battalion markers into the now unoccupied position. Unlike the move action, the battalion does not have to reduce its cohesion track by one since the advance is considered part of the attack action. Further, any one non-exhausted U.S. battalion that is adjacent to the now vacant position that the U.S. advanced from may advance into that position without losing a cohesion point. Only one battalion can be daisy-chained per attack. Next is the move action. One battalion moves to an unoccupied position that is either enemy or friendly controlled. This move costs one cohesion point. One daisy chain move into the previously occupied U.S. position is allowed by an adjacent, non-exhausted battalion, but that battalion must also spend a cohesion point to move. However, they are not required to move. The next action is rotate battalions. One battalion may swap positions with another battalion in an adjacent position. One of the two battalions must reduce its cohesion by one and perform any necessary exhaustion checks. The player chooses which battalion reduces its cohesion, but it may not be an exhausted battalion. However, exhausted battalions, as indicated by the red cube, may still rotate. The next action is regroup. When regrouping, one battalion adds three to its current cohesion on the cohesion track. In this example, the current cohesion is at three, but the regroup action brings it up to six on the cohesion track. If the exhausted battalion is at 6 or higher after the regroup action, the battalion is rallied back to not exhausted and the red exhaustion cube can be removed from the battalion. If the regroup brings the cohesion level to 3, 4, or 5 for an exhausted battalion, we must make an immediate exhaustion check. To make an exhaustion check, we roll one die and compare the result to the battalion's current cohesion level. If the die result is equal to or less than the current cohesion, the battalion is not exhausted. If the result is higher, then it is exhausted. Regroups on non-exhausted battalions do not require an exhaustion check. The last action is place a new wave. This action allows us to place up to two battalions that are off-board as reserves into any vacant wave 1 or wave 2 positions. It does not reduce any cohesion, but it does count as the U.S. action for that turn. The wave position to Green Beach 5 may only be placed once a U.S. battalion occupies Red Beach 1 or Black Beach 1. So let's review the victory and loss conditions. Recall that the Japanese win if they tie or exceed the U.S. victory points. The Japanese gain victory points differently than the U.S. And the U.S. wins if they have more victory points than the Japanese. The type of U.S. win, whether marginal, moderate, or smashing, is determined by how many more victory points are scored by the U.S. To help with the victory point tally, you can use the victory point worksheet to help you calculate victory points and determine the winner. This concludes this review of Terrawa 1943. Visit us at these sites and don't forget to leave a comment about your experience with this game, or let us know what game you'd like to see reviewed next. And if you'd like to experience something more exciting than fixing your bayonet and charging a Japanese bunker, stick around for our disclaimer. Coming up next. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,